the letter by John Greenleaf Whittier tis over, Moses. All is lost. I hear the bells a ringing. Of Pharaoh and his red sea host I hear the free wills singing. We're routed, Moses, horse and foot, if there be truth in figures, with federal wigs in hot pursuit, and hail, and all the niggers. Alack, alas, this month or more we've felt a sad foreboding. Our very dreams the burden bore of central cliques exploding. Before our eyes a furnace shone, where heads of dough were roasting, and one we took to be your own the traitor Hale was toasting. Our Belknap brother heard with awe the Congo minstrels playing, at Pittsfield Reuben Levitt saw the ghost of stores. A praying, and Carol's woods were sad to see, with black-winged crows a darting, and black snout looked on Ossipy, new glossed with Day and Martin. We thought the old man of the notch, his face seemed changing wholly his lips seemed thick, his nose seemed flat, his misty hair looked woolly, and Coos teamsters, shrieking, fled from the metamorphosed figure. Look there, they said, the old stonehead himself is turning nigger. The schoolhouse out of Canaan hauled seemed turning on its track again, and like a great swamp turtle crawled to Canaan village back again, shook off the mud and settled flat upon its underpinning. A nigger on its ridge pole sat, from ear to ear a grinning, gray h. D heard o' nights the sound of rail cars onward faring, right over democratic ground the iron horse came tearing. A flag waved o'er that spectral train, as high as Pittsfield steeple. Its emblem was a broken chain. Its motto, to the people. I dream that Charlie took his bed, with Hale for his physician. His daily dose an old, unread and unreferred, petition. There Hayes and Tucker's nurses sat, as near as near could be, man. They leached him with the, Democrat. They blistered with the, Freeman. Ah, grisly portents. What avail your terrors of forewarning. We wake to find the nightmare Hale astride our breasts at morning. From Portsmouth lights to Indian stream our foes their throats are trying. The very factory spindles seem to mock us while they're flying. The hills have bonfires. In our streets flags flout us in our faces. The newsboys, peddling off their sheets, are hoarse with our disgraces. In vain we turn, for jibing wit and shoutings follow. After, as if old Kearsarg had split his granite sides with laughter. What boots it that we pelted out the anti-slavery women, and bravely strewed their hall about with tattered lace and trimming? Was it for such a sad reverse our mobs became peacemakers, and kept their tar and wooden horse for Englishmen and Quakers? For this did Shifty Atherton make gag rules for the Great House? Wiped we for this our feet upon petitions in our State House? Plied we for this our acts of doom, no stubborn traitor sparing, who scoffed at our opinion loom, and took to homespun wearing? Ah, Moses, hard it is to scan these crooked providences, deducing from the wisest plan the saddest consequences. Strange that, in trampling as was meet the nigger men's petition, we sprung a mine beneath our feet which opened up perdition. How goodly, Moses, was the game in which we've long been actors, supplying freedom with the name and slavery with the practice. Our smooth words fed the people's mouth, their ears our party. Rattle. We kept them headed to the south, as drovers do their cattle. But now our game of politics the world at large is learning, and men grown gray in all our tricks states evidence are turning. Votes and preambles subtly spun they cram with meanings louder, and load the democratic gun with abolition powder. The Ides of June. Woe well worth the day when, turning all things over, the traitor Hale shall make his hay from democratic clover. Who then shall take him in the law, who punish crime so flagrant? Whose hand shall serve, whose pen shall draw, a writ against that, vagrant? Alas, no hope is left us here, and one can only pine for the envied place of overseer of slaves in Carolina. Pray, Moses, give Calhoun the wink, and see what pay he's giving. We're practiced long enough, we think, to know the art of driving. And for the faithful rank and file, who know their proper stations, perhaps it may be worth their while to try the rice plantations. Let Hale exult, let Wilson scoff, to see us southward scamper. The slaves, we know, are, better off than laborers in New Hampshire.